Hello everyone, my name is Kenton Cavestu. I'm an ex-BCG consultant, an ex-Googler, and the founder of RocketBlocks, an online platform that helps candidates prepare for interviews. In today's RocketBlocks mini lesson, we're going to talk about BCG Gamma. But before I jump into that, I do want to address coronavirus. Obviously, it has turned the world upside down. And first and foremost, I want to say that I hope everyone out there is staying safe and staying sane. Now, obviously, coronavirus has had some changes for where we shoot as well. As you can see, we're now shooting out of a home office and things look a little bit different. But nevertheless, we are here and excited to talk about all things related to interviews. And let's go ahead and jump into Gamma. What we're going to talk about today is specifically what is this new unit, what type of work do they do, and how does it fit into the overall BCG strategy. So three key parts. Let's go ahead and jump in. Let's start with the basics. So BCG Gamma is a data science and advanced analytics unit within BCG. So you can think about it as a division within the parent company of BCG itself. And although it's relatively new, it was actually launched in 2016, so it's just about four years old now, it's grown really, really quickly. So BCG has offices in 90 plus locations around the world, and the Gamma unit now has a presence in over 30 of those offices as well. So it's scaling really quickly. And at a high level, let's talk about what does it mean to be an advanced analytics and data science group? Because we might think, well, doesn't, doesn't the BCG Classic, the traditional BCG teams, don't they do advanced analytics as well? So how is it really different? And I think there's one key thing you want to keep in mind. It's what sort of asset is being turned over by the team at the end of an engagement. So if you think about a BCG Classic team, they might look at a bunch of data, do a bunch of analytics over the course of the project, but what they're delivering at the end of the engagement is ultimately a recommendation to the client about how they should proceed based off what they've learned. Whereas in a BCG Gamma project, they might actually look at some data from the client, maybe they'll pull in some data from an external source as well if it's relevant, and then actually build some sort of model in whatever coding language is relevant for that particular case, and then help the client implement that model in their own technology stack. So the asset coming from the data work that's being done on the Gamma side is actually a model that's going to sort of run in the background that this company as part of their continuous operations versus a recommendation for how to proceed. So now that we've got that high level understanding set, let's jump in and look at a detailed example project. Okay, so let's talk specifics. A typical BCG Gamma case is usually six to nine months and can be broken down into three main stages. And we're gonna walk through each of those stages. But first, let's talk about a sample problem that BCG Gamma might face. Imagine a client comes to them that's a commercial bank and says, hey, we really need help predicting which of our customers is likely to churn and also looking at our existing customer base and figuring out which products in our suite we should be upselling to various customers to deepen that relationship and the value that we provide to them. So that's the challenge they've come to BCG Gamma with. Now, what is an actual Gamma case look like to help solve this challenge? Okay, so let's talk about those three stages. The first stage is actually building a model, so actually using data science, machine learning, advanced analytics techniques to build some sort of model that's going to answer the client questions. Now, they may employ a variety of different techniques. It could be neural networks or lookalike models or k-nearest neighbors, etc. But BCG Gamma will do whatever it takes to sort of build a model that is going to answer those client questions, which in this case was helping them predict churn and helping them predict which products they should upsell to certain customers. So they would build a model that would have those outputs uh, for the client. So that's the first thing. Then the second thing they need to do once they've actually built a model that can do that successfully is they're now going to integrate this model into the client's technology stack. So every client out there has a different tech stack that they use, they have different products that they use internally um, to, you know, for their salespeople and their account managers, their CRM systems and dashboards, et cetera. So there's going to be a different setup everywhere. And what BCG is going to do in this second step is actually take the model that they built and integrate it into the systems at the client company 
so that it can be used on an operational basis. So this model is really going to be put to work and integrated directly into the products um, at that client company. And that's what the second stage is all about. Now the third stage, once that's complete, is actually helping the client company utilize this model that's now been integrated into their systems. And there's a few different facets of that. So you can think about in this particular case, you have the account managers that are going to need to know, okay, where are the recommendations from this model coming from? Like literally, where do I get those recommendations? Uh, what is the, you know, the metadata and the information that comes with those recommendations mean? How should I actually take those um, and take action on them with my clients to, to make real impact? So that's the first part. And then the second part is the technical teams at the client company are going to need to know the details of how this model works, like what sort of code like coding language is it written in, um, and how is it integrated specifically into their systems? Because if they need to change their technology stack in the future, say they're doing a refactoring and moving from one language to another, they need to know how can we keep this model working in this new environment. So that third stage of the case is really about educating the client so that they are aware of how to really make the most of this new model that was built in the first stage, integrated in the second stage, and is now theirs to use. So those are what the three stages of a case uh, from BCG Gamma looks like. So let's take a step back and think about why is BCG doing this? If you could travel back in time 20 years and pull a random BCG partner aside and said, hey, do you think you'll be writing code and deploying code on site in clients' technology stacks in the future? They probably would have thought you were a little bit crazy, but that's exactly what's going on today. So I think the interesting question is, why has BCG invested so heavily in something that seems so different than their traditional business model? And I think there's really two things going on here that we should talk about. The first is that clients are increasingly demanding that their consultants help them implementing the actual recommendations that they're making. So remember the commercial bank we were talking about. Imagine that case started not with the BCG Gamma example we talked about, but with a traditional BCG consulting case where the commercial bank came to them and said, hey, we're really worried that we're underperforming relative to our peers. Can you help us figure out what's going on? And BCG maybe said, great, sure, we can help, did a bunch of analysis and came back and said, hey, we really think there's two things going on. One, your customers churn more than they do at your competitors, and you're not upselling them on enough of your products to drive profitability. The bank says, okay, great. Now we know what we need to do, but how are we actually going to implement that? So that's the first thing. They're asking for more implementation. Now, the second thing is that if you think about, again, the same bank that we've been using as an example, even if they decide they really want to implement and take action on these solutions, a lot of these client firms, like this bank, are not expertise. They do not have the expertise to staff up data science and engineering teams, um, hire the right leaders, hire the right teammates, train them, and get them sort of up to snuff so that they can tackle problems like this. They're experts in their own domains, in this case, commercial lending and helping small businesses, not necessarily building models that uh, help predict churn. So if you look at that mismatch of some of the problems these, these clients are having and what they're set up well to do, it really creates this big opportunity for a third-party organization like BCG to say, look, we're going to staff up on world-class data scientists and engineers, and then we can come, we can deploy them when you really need them in certain cases, and we can shorten the time it's going to take you to get where you need to go so that you don't have to build a whole new organizational capability yourself. And if you're a small commercial bank or a mid-sized commercial bank or a bunch of other different type of clients out there whose specialty is not engineering and data science, that trade-off is going to start to look really compelling. And if you multiply that over and over and over again with a bunch of different clients, that adds up to a really big market opportunity, which is exactly why I think BCG is pursuing this and pursuing it aggressively. To sum it up, we've spoken about BCG Gamma, which was launched recently in 2016, but is growing really quickly. And they're doing a very different type of work than BCG has traditionally done for decades with their core management consulting offering. And I think the final key implication here for folks interested in working in this industry is that 
not only are there going to be a ton of new roles that BCG is hiring for at scale, so analytics roles, engineering roles, software architects, that's really exciting. It means that folks that are doing the traditional management consulting as well, the scope of the type of work they get to engage in is really going to deepen and broaden because you might be working on a traditional BCG case, but to get to bring in BCG Gamma folks or see them work and implement recommendations that you worked on in another case, which is really exciting and just going to deepen the type of skill set that you can gain there. So that's awesome. Thank you so much for watching. We've got tons of great videos on the interview process and the career path of these firms coming out on a weekly basis. So everyone stay safe, have a great day, and see you again soon.